Okay, so let's build this RSI entry um, and exit condition here, right? So um, the, the uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'll just use the default settings here. So the entry will be, let's stretch this out. Yeah, we got some good examples here. Um, so the entry will be short when the RSI crosses above 70, right? But then um, generate an exit signal if the RSI moves too high. So let's say up to 75 there, you know. So an exit at 75, and then the opposite, let's see here. So we're buying at 30, and then exiting at like 25. Does that get down to 25? Yeah, I think it does. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so we have two examples right there on our chart. All right, so let's get Bloodhound open. Um, and let's see. Let's... Let me give this a better name here. So there we go. All right. So um, we're going to generate a long signal at 30 and then an exit at 25 and vice versa for shorts. Uh, so let's see here. All right. So we need, yeah, let's grab a couple of crossover solvers. All right. So the entry. Actually, hold on. Before I get going here, um, there you go. So this will be the entry here. There. All right. So this will just be the entry signals. And all right. So we're looking for the RSI. Right to cross 30 and cross 70. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, all right, so input A, that's going to be the RSI. <clears throat> we'll do a little search for the RSI. There. All right, and then input B. That's going to be right either the 30 value or the 70 value. So let's do the 30 value first. <clears throat> right? So there you go. Whenever, right, whenever that RSI uh, crosses down 30 or crosses up 30, we're getting signals. Now, when it crosses down, that is along. So we need. We need to change our outputs here. So we're gonna we're gonna turn off crosses in direction and the crosses against against direction. We're gonna turn that on. There you go. So there you go. There's our cross down and it generates a long output, right? A long signal. And then of course, if the RSI crosses up, it's generating a short. So we, we don't care about those cross ups, right? So this one, we only want to see the long output, right? There we go. Right, like that, like that, <clears throat> right, like that. Okay, so now, so that that is for the RSI crossing 30. And so we need to make a copy and paste that, paste um, the copy there. So this one was actually for the 30. Let's give this a better name here. All right, so that's long um, at 30. This other one here this will be short at 70. There we go. All right. So this solver is only going to give us the short signals. So we'll change the evaluate to short only. And now we need to adjust right input B. We need to change that fixed value to 70. And there we go. Right. So whenever that RSI crosses up 
through 70, there's all of our short signals there. Right? right? And so th this is um, a unique case where we actually need two crossover solvers, right? Because we're using two fixed values, right? One of the values is 30 and the other one is 70. So because we have two separate values, right, we, we, have, we have to use two separate solvers, right, because the input, you can only have one, one value there. And so now we just combine them together, sorry, using an OR node. So either OR signal, you know, is, is good for, um, you know, either OR condition, right, is what we're looking for for those entry signals. And there we go. So there are those entry signals. <clears throat> okay. There we go. We can give that a name. So there you go. Our, that OR node is our entry signals. So, all right. So now we need the exits. So let's create a new logic template. So all right, so we want to create an exit at 25 or 75. Let's see here. So now for that, let's use a threshold solver. We'll use a threshold solver. So essentially, anytime the RSI is below 25 or above 75, right? That is our exit condition. So let's give this a name. So uh, let's switch the input, right? The input needs to be the RSI indicator. Here we go. There's the RSI. And now we need to go into the output settings. So, all right. So this is, these are exit signals. So we want the opposite uh, we want the opposite output, right? For an exit, it needs to be the opposite output of the trade direction. So if we're going long when the RSI crosses below 30, right? So if we're in a long position, then that exit signal needs to be a short signal because it's a long trade. So to exit a long trade, you need a short signal. So for the short signals here, right, whenever the RSI is less than, let's also say less than or equals to 25. If we hit apply, there we go, right? We can see, yeah, there's a couple of bars here. There's three bars here where that RSI uh, is either 25 or below. Right? So now for the, for the long, uh, right, and again, remember these short signals are the exit for a long trade. So now the long output um, is when the RSI is greater than or equal to 75. And if I hit apply there, um, and yeah, there we go. So there is a couple of yeah uh, bars there where that RSI goes up to 75. And remember, when the RSI hits 70, that's a short trade. So we're in a short trade, and then these long exit signals will exit that short trade. So, and that's it. All done. <clears throat> we can close that out. So, so now we can uh, switch between the two here. And, you know, sometimes... If your logic template name here, if it doesn't update, uh, just reload the chart. So sometimes NinjaTrader, you know, requires a, a reload in order to get, you know, these names to update. Um, so there you go. So there's our RSI entry, right? So there you go. Go long. And of course the RSI, you know, did a little switch back there. Um, so go long. 
and then a bunch of shorts, short, 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 short. And then here are the exit signals right there. Exit, exit, exit. All right, so there you have it, Kenny. So just to offer a little clarification here. So you'll notice, let me get this set up here. Let's see, what is this? This is the entry. Uh, no, this is the exit. Um, yeah, there we go. This is the exits. So you know, notice with the exits, we used a threshold solver, right? And that's because exit signals don't have to be as precise as entry signals, right? So obviously, you know, the exit is pretty simple. Whenever the RSI is 75 or greater, you know, just get, get out of the trade. So, you know, so your exits generally don't have to be as clean as your entries, right? Obviously, you don't want a bunch of random entries. So your entries need to be a little cleaner. So with the entries, right, I used crossover solvers because you only want a entry signal on the bar that the RSI crosses, right, those levels. So when that RSI crosses 30, right, you only want an entry signal on that bar. So using a crossover, right, creates a single clean signal on the crossover bar. So if, if I used a threshold for the entry signals, right, we would see all kinds of long signals here, right? Every, whenever that RSI is below 30, we'd be, you know, long entry on every single bar. And, you know, and obviously that's not what you actually want to trade, right? You don't want to be going long on every single bar there. So, yeah, so the exit, so the crossover solver, you know, cleans things up. So, you know, if you did use a threshold solver for the entries, you would then have to use, um, you then have to use a signal blocker to clean up those entry signals. Right. So the crossover, you know, just kind of simplified things, uh, and it's more direct as to, you know, as to the, yeah, it's it's the more it's the direct condition that is actually being looked for on the chart. All right. Well, that does it for Kenny's question. Seems like somebody must be pushing this RSI system because I have gotten this question several times recently. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, yeah, Rick Rick is kind of asking the next logical follow-up question, which is, can you see both the entry and the exit signals on the chart at the same time? Yes, you can. You just have to add two bloodhounds. Right, so Bloodhound only has um, a single out. Uh, Bloodhound has two outputs, a long and a short output. Right, long and a short outputs are independent. So, um, yeah, so you just have to add two Bloodhounds to the chart, and then, you know, the first Bloodhound you would set it up for your entry signals, and the second Bloodhound you would set it up to show your exit signals, and that's how you could show show both entries and exits and then of course you know and then of course you know you can just go in and change the plot colors so you know again when you go into the blood out right you can change your plot colors here you know to whatever you like for your exits so and if you want you know you can turn the racing stripes on and off there so remember you do have uh, control over those racing stripes.